In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to start a painting with three spots of color so that you can create clear light and dark values while using color. Before we get to that, I, am, I created an imprimatura for the base of my painting surface. And here I'm sketching out my painting, which is a sunflower that's set inside a vase. All right, now that I'm done with my painting sketch that just provides me a basic composition of where my painting is going to be placed, I mix up my very first color spot, which is this rather light value yellow color. Now I use my palette knife here to smooth out the paint to get rid of any texture because doing that allows me to see that color spot more clearly. Now I apply a medium value color, which is a slightly darker yellow that is right next to the light value yellow color that I first applied. Now to get that darker value yellow, I mixed some dioxazine purple with my yellow color. Now the slightly darker yellow color extends a larger area than the very light value yellow, so I apply it to a larger spot. And I also soften the edge there between the light yellow color and the darker yellow color. So there's a soft transition between the two. Then I also use my palette knife here to draw and I scrape away the paint that needs to go away since it's spread out kind of just all around that petal area of the sunflower. So the palette knife is very handy for drawing and marking out where the edge of this petal is. So now we have two spots of color. We have our very light value and we have our medium value, and now we need our dark value. So in the center of the sunflower is the darkest value. It's kind of this dark brownish color. And I mix that up and I apply that right next to the light yellow value color. So now we have a, we're starting to actually create a sense of light here because we have the three main values. We have our light, medium, and dark value. And this is such a great way to start out a painting because you started out with a very strong foundation in value and you create a great clarity with value while also using color. I just work at continuing to spread around here this dark kind of brownish color that's at the center. And again, using the palette knife to smooth out that paint and getting rid of the texture helps to see the color and the value more clearly and determine whether it's working in the painting or not. Now slowly bring this dark value brown color over to the left side of the petal. So that's also touching that more medium value yellow color. Now I smooth out the paint with my palette knife again around the, the dark brown area. And I search for how far down that dark brown area goes to, if it is a little further up or if it goes further down. So that's um, what I'm capturing right here. Now here I'm applying a slightly darker brown color because I realized that the center part of the sunflower actually needs to be a little bit darker in value, specifically this area that's directly to the right of the light petal, the light yellow petal. One of the best things about starting with just three spots of color and focusing on a light value, a medium value, and a dark value that are right next to one another is that you are able to create a really strong foundation for having a, a, a strong light and dark value structure in your painting. And if something is a little off, you can fix that right in the beginning. Versus if you don't really start out with a strong foundation, then you might 
just notice that something is off um, let's say when you're halfway through the painting where you've already spent maybe even a couple of hours painting and working on your piece and that will take a lot more effort a lot more work to fix than if you're just able to fix um, something right in the beginning like I did with that very dark volume where I made it just a little bit darker. Now I'm using a rag here to actually wipe away some of the paint to clear the area that's um, over to the right here so that I can paint over that area and not have the paint get mixed up with the brown color. Now next up here, I apply an even darker yellow color as this um, right side of the sunflower is in shadow here. And we can see that this yellow is quite a bit darker than that medium value color that we applied earlier. So to get this um, color, I mix together some dioxazine purple with cadmium yellow medium, but then to, that still wasn't quite dark enough. So I mixed in some phthalo green and I mixed in also a lizard and crimson with that so that alizarin crimson and that red could mute that phthalo green because the phthalo green is quite strong and we don't want to have a greenish looking yellow color. That's absolutely not what we want. So um, then I intermittently also mixed in a little bit more dioxazine purple to help to get the color to be deeper and darker in value. Now I lighten my very dark yellow color by mixing in a little bit of cadmium yellow medium into it and I apply that to more um, below it, to that bottom part there because that section is just a little bit lighter in value. So I paid attention to that more subtler shift in value. I use my palette knife here to draw out the edge of this particular petal. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Palette knife can be really, really helpful in drawing out and just marking out the edges of areas and scraping away paint where it needed. Now I also here use my rag to wipe away the paints um, because I plan on applying the other color here and I don't want to get it mixed up with the dark brown or with the very dark yellow that I have mixed up. So just kind of create a clear area for myself to apply paint. I next mix up a rather light value yellow color and I apply that for the next petal areas. This, this um, petal in particular is very light in value and I actually used some cadmium lemon um, while mixing up this yellow color. I of course also used some other colors such as a light purple and of course I used white. Um, can't use yellow just straight out of the tube because it would be far too bright. You always have to mute it just a little bit to make it really feel real and like it's from this world and not like it's, you know, a really overly bright saturated colors. You can see I use my palette knife to really help to create a clean, sharp, um, hard edge there between the very dark brown color and then the light value color of the petal. Now I again have a very dark yellow color that I used dioxazine purple and I also used again some of that phthalo green and then a lizard crimson to make it this dark and I apply it right next to that light value yellow color that I just applied earlier. So I'm really kind of moving forward and building on top of those initial three values that I applied at the beginning stage of the painting. And I'm being very clear with the light and dark values that I'm mixing up with the color. So I'm really thinking value first and I'm thinking about the color secondarily. Now actually mix in a little bit of yellow into that very dark value yellow I just applied. And, I, and this is just a slightly lighter version and I apply this to the left of that very light value color that's on that petal there. As I apply this, I'm really just thinking of it as a color spot and I'm not being as concerned with the placement of it or getting the drawing absolutely right on as I'm just applying the color um, because I first and foremost want to make sure that the value is right and also then that the color works together with the painting and then I will adjust it and make sure the placement of it is correct and I will and use my palette knife to um, find the edge of it as I'm um, doing right now with my palette knife here. 
I'm adjusting the color just a little bit here by making it lighter in value and adding more yellow to the color. Um, again, thinking of it just in terms of color spots and just really just applying the color and not being too concerned about the price, precise drawing and making it look like a petal helps you to really see it just in terms of value and color and making sure that those things are working first because that is absolutely the most important part of the painting. And um, of course, it's very important to get the drawing right and the placement of things right, but you can adjust that after you apply the paint and, uh, and apply that value and color to your spots. You can see here in the area that's just above that um, very light value yellow, it's slightly darker than the area of the petal that's just above it. The area above it is where more of the light is hitting it, while the area below it is more in the shadow area. And the difference between the two is just, it's very subtle. So um, it's important to pay attention to those more subtle shifts in value. You can see how I've actually tested out different shades of yellow for this particular area of the sunflower. Some I scraped away and I started over again and I've applied some just on top of the color. Um, and I'm, now it looks like this is um, working out for me here. So I'm continuing on with this particular shade of yellow and continuing to apply it to that area. So you can really see how I'm focusing really more over on getting the value right, getting the color right, getting that base to work the foundational aspect of it. And I'm not as so concerned about making it actually look like a sunflower, making it look like a petal. Um, that will come in time um, because if I worry about getting the value right, getting the color right, then that will naturally happen. It will naturally look like a sunflower and have that sense of light. And I work at softening the edge between the dark value of that um, dark brown center and then that more darker value petals that are in the back. And also soft edges recede back in space and that area is kind of the back part of the flower and really sharp hard edges, they come forward in space. So that really helps to create a sense of space. Um, with the flower and doing this kind of more at the beginning stage of the painting helps a significant amount to really build that up as you move forward and to really have a clear solid sense of space with the painting so you can really see how that's starting to develop here as we soften that edge more and more I'm continuing to reinforce that soft edge there in the back by using my finger and also my palette knife Now I'm also paying attention to other parts of the flower where there are also soft edges, um, such as right now here in this bottom area of the painting where the value is more similar to that very dark value. So it's um, similar values um, to one another that create soft edges. So when two darker values are next to one another, they're gonna have a much softer edge than let's say when a very dark value is next to a very light value. And right here, I actually reinforce that really hard edge because that's a very, very light value that's next to a very, very dark value. That very light petal that's here to the right, that next to the very dark brown creates a sharp edge. Now I move over to the left side of the painting here and I apply a color spot to the left of one of the very first color spots that I applied in the beginning of this painting. Now the values of these two color spots that are next to one another are actually quite similar. Um, so it create a rather soft edge between the two, but they're still distinctive and different. And I now actually lighten my color a little bit by mixing in a small amount of white and yellow into the color. As you can see here, it's a little bit lighter as that darker, slightly darker yellow turns into a slightly lighter value in this petal. So this is a subtle shift in value that's happening here. Now I apply a slightly lighter value color spots closer here to the top of the flower. And 
Now at the moment, some of the areas are a little formless because I really just applied color spots here. So I'm using my palette knife to um, draw out where some of the distinctive boundaries are, distinctive areas of particular petals. And I do the same thing here now in this middle section where I more distinctly mark out where the boundaries of a particular petal is so that I can um, know exactly where it is. This is where a palette knife really is so handy to be able to mark these things out because you can just mark them out in the wet paint. And I also um, now, I mixed up a, a very dark brown color here for the center part of the flower as this particular area of that center part is a little bit darker. It's important to pay attention to those more subtler shifts where some areas are darker and some areas are lighter because it makes a very big difference in the painting. You can also tell that there's very sharp edges created with that very dark value next to the much lighter value of the petals and that also helps to create that more clear sense of space um, where it's really feels like the front is coming forward and then the area that's more towards the back of the flower is going further back. Here I again work at creating that softer edge by using my palette knife. I work here at making that distinction between that dark brown area of the center part of the sunflower then this petal that's to the left more distinct and I'm getting very specific about the shape of that and where exactly it's at. And I'm working at making that more outer rim area of this um, center part of the flower darker in value. So I'm working my way around the flower because in this particular sunflower, that outer section is darker in value than the more center area of it. But I make sure that the more lighter value brown middle part and then the darker outer section are soft edges and really kind of more blend in with one another. Now a little bit earlier I marked out with my palette knife this particular area where there is a lighter value part of a petal here. So now I go back to that area and I apply lighter value yellow to that particular area. And I do the same thing to this area on the left where I specifically marked out that area and scraped away some paint. Now since this particular area, that bottom part of this petal is a little bit darker, I apply a darker um, value yellow to that area. So in a way, I'm going back to certain areas and adjusting and just uh, adding in these more subtle um, color shifts, value shifts to those particular areas. Now here I'm working on creating a soft edge between the dark brown color and then the dark yellow color of this petal. And again, that will help to make that area move further back in space since that um, part of the flower is um, more in the back part of the flower. Now I work at here creating that 
more distinctive where this light value petal kind of stands out a little bit. So I use my palette knife to draw that out to find the edge of that and really make it more distinctive and really search for the boundaries of that. I now apply a darker yellow color that's more on the outer edge here of the sunflower. And again, I'm really thinking of, of it as a color spot, thinking of value first, and then worrying about the color. And I'm not worrying so much about the exact boundary of it because I am going to be adjusting that um, as I move along here. And I create soft edges by using the, my thumb. I rub the paint in where needed, where I, where I want to reinforce a soft edge and also use my palette knife to do that as well. Now again here, I use my palette knife to draw and mark out where there is a significant and specific change where it's a different value or a different color and that helps me to um, know exactly where to place that. Now I soften that value even more between the dark value of the center portion of the sunflower and then that dark petal that's right behind it. Now I use my palette knife here to help myself to measure and draw out where a particular part of the flower is located. So all that drawing and marking out was to know where the green leaf of the sunflower is positioned so I can place that in the correct area. And I use my palette knife to kind of scrape away some paint so that green color doesn't get mixed in with the yellow. But before I work on that, I'm attending to other sections of this flower here, softening edges in certain areas and doing that before I move on to the next stage. Here I'm comparing different areas with one another to understand and know where, where specific parts of the sunflower line up so I know where the end point of this leaf is and where the starting point of another one is. So it's very handy to line um, vertical areas up to know um, what the correct drawing is. And I'll start a second leaf here that's just directly to the right. And it's a slightly different color. It's uh, just a subtle change. Now I create a soft edge here between the leaf that's on the left and the petals um, in the sunflower. So this is what it looks like to start a painting out with three main values and then build around that with color spots and really putting an emphasis on value so that you have a really strong sense of light and dark in your painting. And when you continue in this manner, then we, you come to a place where you really have a very strong sense of light and dark and really strong, powerful colors that reflect what you are working on and what you're looking at. So this is the end stage of the painting here. Um, the painting was continued on further, thinking in the same manner, thinking in terms of color spots, really considering edges, and then um, this is the result. Thank you for following along. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask and leave a comment below.